All right, here we go with our video for 6.4, equilibria. And equilibria is simply the plural of equilibrium. And what we're going to see is that some physical and chemical reactions are capable of reaching what's called equilibrium. Right? And the part that we usually think of from equilibrium is equal. However, that does not mean that the amounts of the reactants and products are equal of equal quantities, it means something else, and we're going to take a look at that. Equilibrium occurs when the rate of the forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction in a closed system. It's represented, and we've seen this already, by double arrows instead of a single arrow. And this illustrates to us that the reactions are proceeding in both directions. <coughs> And it tends to happen at the same time. Now, equilibrium is what's called dynamic, which means that it's constantly changing or fluctuating. Okay, and we can affect it. And also, the forward reaction is constantly happening, and the reverse reaction is constantly happening. The equilibrium means that the reactant and product concentrations are constant when we're talking about things that are dissolved in a liquid. It does not mean that the reactant and product concentrations are equal. Okay, so if we have a, a concentration of A and a concentration of B means A doesn't change, B doesn't change, but it doesn't mean that the, the same amount of each. You can have a lot more of A than B, or vice versa. Now, the two main kinds of equilibrium to be concerned with, the first one is physical equilibrium. What does that mean, involve? Well, physical changes kind of makes sense. And you know about phase equilibrium that occurs during a phase change, right? So here we have a phase change, let's say, from a solid to a liquid, okay, and let's say we're at this point in the phase change where we have a certain amount of solid and a certain amount of liquid. The, if we don't add or take away any more heat, it'll stay put. Some of the liquid will freeze into a solid, some of the solid will free, melt into a liquid, but the total amount would stay the same. Okay, so if we have uh, ice water, and we store it at zero degrees Celsius, the amount of ice and the amount of water will stay the same. But the rate of melting, some ice will melt, some water will refreeze, and the rates stay the same. Same thing if we took a sealed container at 100 degrees Celsius. Right, we have water in this sealed container. Some water will evaporate. Some of the water vapor will condense and the water level will remain the same because these are happening at equal rates. And the solution equilibrium occurs at the solution saturation point where the rate of dissolving equals the rate of crystallization. So let's say you have water and you add so much salt that a little bit of it piles up on the bottom here. Some of the salt will be constantly dissolving. Some of the salt that's in the water will be constantly precipitating out and forming that solid again. In a chemical reaction, in a chemical equilibrium, that's what happens when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. Or we can say the rate of breaking bonds is equal to the rate of forming bonds. All right, that brings us to question time. We're just going to have to be able to define equilibrium in terms of reactant and product concentrations as well as of forward and reverse rates. All right, that brings us to the end. I will see you guys.